make a joyful noise unto him with sounds. For the Lord is our great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pastures and the sheep of His hands. Are we in the house of the Lord today to worship Him? Are we here to praise Him? Are we here to praise Him? Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we're going to sing this into chorus, after which we'll have Brother Harrison come in with a prayer of, of thanksgiving. It says, praise him. Lord, we 
Today's scripture reading will be taken from Psalm 146. Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have been. While I have been here. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to the earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which makes heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is which keepeth true forever, which executed, which executed judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners, the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind, the Lord raiseth them that are bowed down, the Lord loveth the righteous, the Lord preserveth the strangers, he, he relieveth the fatherless and widow, but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations, praise in the Lord. Sure, you're not saying. 
experience from the very first day I came until today I'm still here. Praise God. So we also want to recognize those of us who are celebrating among us, celebrating birthdays, anniversaries this week. So we have three days projected for birthdays this week, Brother Abraham Smith, Brother Earl Walker, and Sister Andrew Watt. So please contact them this week. Let them feel welcome. And for those who will be celebrating anniversaries, wish them a happy anniversary when it comes. Brother Andrew Ellis, our very own youth president, Brother Andrew Ellis and his wife, Sister Chanel Ellis. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless you and have a wonderful time worshiping the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. All the years are going by. Praise the Lord. Brother Andrew has been married. Praise God. It does seem like yesterday. Time is going by so quickly. And I also want to welcome in the house. Praise God. My heart is, you know, I'm just feeling so joyful today. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'm so happy to see Brother Hoori in the house this morning.
Sister, we're going to be having Sister Andrea Brown, who will be coming with a solo thereafter. We will be having the praise team with a selection. But as Sister Andrea makes her way forward, look at those lovely young ladies on the restaurant. Praise God. Hallelujah. My heart was blessed. And gentlemen, men, praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You know, it's so good to see our young people striving after God. And when we see them, brothers and sisters, let's breathe a word of encouragement into their souls. Praise God. That they carry on this apostolic doctrine. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. We're happy to see all you. Oh, Lord, we need to Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah.
singing of Jesus, keep worshiping Jesus. I greet the congregation in the name of the Lord, and uh, I want to greet all our guests that are here. God bless you as we worship the Lord together. May our hearts be saturated by His presence, which we pray will empower you. Amen. In your daily walk. Lord, we thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you for the beautiful atmosphere of worship in your house, the fellowship of your people. And as we come, we just ask that you guide us as we minister your word. Let your divine will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I am reading to you from the book of 1 Kings. And uh, I will begin at verse 7. And this says of the story of Elijah, as he prophesied a drought upon Israel and uh, the happenings that took place after the drought. Verse 7, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, that's Elijah, Arise, go, to, go thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of six. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And, uh, and, uh, the, and she said, Amen. And she arose. Just have my pardon. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I am not a king, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after, make for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sent rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which is spake by Elijah. God bless you. Amen. God bless Brother Hori and family. Good to have you in the house today. In the name of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we have a very interesting narrative before us. As we see Elijah prophesying that there would be a drought in Israel. And he also was affected by the drought. But the Lord sent him by a brook to sustain him there 
until the season change. But then the Bible tells us in verse 7 that the brook dried up. Yes, God caused the rain to fall on the unjust and the just. And the drought also affects the just as well as the unjust. Life is not always fair. There are collateral damage in life because we are in an unjust and an ungodly world, corrupted and convoluted by sin. Sometimes we become caught in the happenings of the environment. And that was what happened to Elijah. Though he prophesied of the drought, he was not exempt from the effects of the drought. Amen. We do understand that in this world, even we Christians do suffer. In this world of sin. No wonder Jesus said to the disciples as he sent them out in Matthew chapter 10 or Mark 10 verse 14. 16 rather. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as God. We see as Elijah went by the brook, the book dried up. The seasons changed. And as he sat there contemplating his future, he must have been trying to decipher all that was happening around him. Amen. Wondering what have I done wrong or what is going on. And sometimes it's not a matter of what is we have done wrong. Sometimes the season is just so adverse. And we being a part of the environment, we are affected by that season. But when the brook dried up, it was time to relocate, time to transition. And it was uh, no use Elijah sitting by a brook that was drying up, you know. Sometimes it comes times to relocate and transition. And it is no use complaining about the environment because, uh, amen, that's the season of that environment. Yes, sometimes we become so acclimatized to a situation and a location that even when the season change and the brook dries up, we sit there still waiting for the brook to replenish. But God told Elijah, it is time to move on. He says, go down to Zarephath. And I have prepared a widow woman there to sustain thee. Because God is always faithful and he always makes provision for his people, even in adverse situation. And as Elijah went to the city, there was the woman gathering sticks. And Elijah cried out to her and says, Fetch me a little water, I pray thee. Because he must have been exhausted from his journey and the drought had been so perilous of complicated his situation. And she obliged, as she was going to fetch the water, he called out again, and bring me a little morsel of bread also. And at this, the woman stops and brought her situation to Elijah. He said, I have not no bread. All I have in my home is a handful of meal. And a little oil in a cruise. And I was just gathering stick to make our last meal for me and my son. And after this, 
I don't know where the next meal is coming from. I don't see another meal in the future for right now. Cause all I see around me is desolation and drought and famine. But Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Do as thou hast said. Go prepare for you and your son. But just make me a king first. For the Lord have sent a prophetic word to you, woman. That barrel of meal, it shall not waste. And the crews of oil shall not fail until God send rain. Amen. In other words, Elijah, he gave her a challenge. Says, I am challenging your faith that you will prove God. This morning, I want to encourage us as a people of God to trust God, but more so, prove God. Prove God. God loves a challenge. He, more than that, many times invites us to challenge Him. He said to Israel and Malachi, I want you to prove me now and see if I will not open the heavens and pour you out a blessing. God relishes a challenge of faith. And as we go forth in this life, there are many adversities and many struggles that we are going to encounter. But I want us to remember, God is pleased by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith not only pleases God, it excites God. Yes, acting on an invisible hope. That is in the future. Yes, having an evidence not seen, but yet perceived, that is faith. And God responds to our faith. And He encourages us, amen, to prove Him by acting on our faith. Yes, brothers and sisters, we see throughout the scriptures that Jesus would ask question to, amen, inspire the faith of those he spoke with. Amen, because he wanted a challenge. He said to the blind man, blind man, Bartimaeus, what would you have me to do? God wants man to challenge him with our faith. And every adversity we face in life, every storm that comes our way, every drought that we encounter, it gives us an opportunity to prove God. And I want to encourage us today to challenge God. Amen. Because he relishes a challenge. That's why Abraham could negotiate with God. Amen. As he determined to destroy Sodom, Abraham said, Lord, if there's 50 in the city, I know you won't destroy the city. And God said, no, Abraham. He went down, he said, God, I know the judge of all the earth will do righteousness. If there is 30 in the city, I know I can depend on you. 
not uh, a man to destroy the city. And Abraham was able to negotiate with God because God relishes a challenge. That's why when David went on the battlefield and saw this uncircumcised Philistine, he was not faced because he knew that God loves a challenge. He had proven God with the bear. He had proven God with the lion. And he said, this is now a challenge. And I'm going to prove God one more time because I am not going to be coward by the adversities and the challenge of Goliath. But I'm going to prove God. Hallelujah. God gave Solomon a challenge. He said, Solomon, ask of me anything you want and I will give it to you. In other words, God wrote Solomon a blank check and say, you fill it with anything you want because you can't ask anything too big that I can't supply. You can't think it where I can't provide it. You can't think it where I can't perform it. He said, is there anything too hard for me? to do and I want to challenge us this morning that the adversities of life they are nothing in comparison to the power of God and they provide an opportunity for us to prove God they provide an opportunity to expand our faith and so let us not be covered and intimidated by life's problems and life challenges. But let them push us towards God. Let them become a means by which we begin to put our situations and begin to prove God. Amen. Amen. Faith needs a challenge in order to grow. God called Abraham. He said, Abraham, I want to move you to the next dimension of your life's mission. But before you can go there, there is a challenge I want to put down to you. He said, Abraham, I want you to take your son, your only son, Amen, your beloved son. Amen. I want you to take him and take him up to Mount Moriah to offer him as a sacrifice. And Abraham, he knew the voice of God, for God had spoken to him so many times that he knew the familiar voice of God. And he knew that God had spoken to him. He couldn't understand, amen, the situation around the command, but he was prepared. He said, I'm going to challenge God. Amen. I don't understand it, but I'm going up there with my son because I believe that even if I slay this boy, amen, God will be able to raise him up from the dead. That is the faith that Abraham went up to Mount Moriah with. That is the conviction that caused him to saddle his arms and to take his son and his servant and went on that journey up to Mount Moriah because he said I've got to challenge God he said I want to obey God because this son came from God I'm not just going to hold on on him amen at this moment when God is requiring him I love him and he is my beloved the only one I consider I have but he said I'm going up to Mount Moriah and I'm going to prove God because because I know that he is a God that can even raise him up back from the dead. I don't believe I'm going to lose my son because God doesn't take amen pleasure in the sacrifice of humans. He is a God of principle and a God of the 
his word. So I'm going to see what God is going to do. God must be up to something to give this unconventional command. And to put me through this, God must be up to something good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say so this is dramatic. This is tearing me apart. But God must be up to something good. There must be a man a greater good at the end of all this trial. He couldn't even tell it to his wife. A man just told his wife, we are going on a worship expedition. Because whenever you're going through the valley, amen, faith turns your adversities into worship. Amen, when you're going through your dark situation, faith will make a valley to blossom. And I want somebody to know you're going through a worshiping experience right now. Amen, through it all. God thanks though the pain and the grief amen say God I'm hurt God I feel the pain I'm overwhelmed I don't understand it but you are God anyhow I'm going to give you thanks in the midst of my pain in the midst of my doubts and situation he said I'm going yonder to worship and return he said, Sarah, you don't worry about it. He couldn't tell Sarah what was happening. Uh, Sarah would have never let that boy leave the house. Sarah would have said, hey, Abraham, you're out of your mind, not my boy. <laughs> Amen, said Sarah. Sarah would have said, Abraham, I trust you in the past, but I think I'm going to have to get you checked out. But all Abraham said to Sarah, Sarah, we will be back in a short while. We're going on an expedition of worship. When he reached the foot of the mountain, he said to the servant, stay here. Me and the boy is going yonder to worship. Amen. Me and the boy is going on an intimate moment with God. That's where the challenge does. It brings you into an intimate moment with God. When God gets an opportunity, amen, to expose himself to you in a new dimension. And as he brought the boy up to the Hill. Amen. The boy looked at his father. He said, Daddy, I see the wood. I'm carrying that wood. I see the fire in your hand. But there is something missing. There is no sacrifice. But he looked at his son. He said, God will provide himself a sacrifice. He said, I don't know how going to happen, but I'm challenging God, you are coming back home with me, because my God is able to do far more exceedingly abundantly, you could ever ask or think, as he lay that boy on the altar, wrapped him on the altar, to that knife and he was coming down and the Lord shouted at Abraham he said Abraham Abraham touch not that boy now I know hallelujah now I know he said Abraham you're ready now for what I've called you for Amen. The Messiah, the lineage and mission, you're ready for it. And he said, here is a ram caught in the ticket. Go get that ram and sacrifice that ram. Brothers and sisters, this is a season of manifestation. It is a season of miracles. It is a season of power. It is a season where God is empowering and restoring. Amen. Amen, the faith and 
the souls of men. And I want to challenge you as an individual. Challenge us as a church. Prove God and see if he will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out the blessing. The adversities you face is a stepping stone to a marvelous experience with Almighty God. Hallelujah. Naaman was a leper. He was a wealthy man, a famous man. He had a situation that made him unhappy. One day a little girl said to Naaman, I wish my Lord was in Israel where the prophet of God is because he would have healed my Lord. They journeyed down to meet the prophet Elijah. When Naaman came, the servant met him at the door. Amen. And said to him, Go dip in Jordan seven times. Naaman, he began to get wrought. He said, I thought the servant of the Lord was going to come out of his office. And I thought he was going to strike his mantle over my ailment. And I would be made whole instantly. And this man coming to tell me to dip into Jordan seven times. And I have better river in Syria that is free of the morass and free of the dirt and grime of Jordan. And he had the audacity to tell me, go dip in Jordan. But the little girl said, Master, just prove God. Prove God. Do what he says. Listen to his voice. Obey. Amen. Step out. Step out of your comfort zone. I know you don't like Jordan. But step out of where you are. And just step into what God is doing. Step into what God is saying. He said just, just subdue yourself. And allow your faith to come out. Naaman went to River Jordan. Praise God. See, faith without works is dead. And when God is getting ready to move, Amen, He's going to challenge your faith to do something. He's going to challenge your faith to do something. A faith don't just sit down and do nothing. Faith is going to keep going until God intervenes. That, that lady with the issue of blood for 12 years, she was trying. Amen. Until God show up. I wonder if somebody is here in the here. The woman, the man at the water of the sea, he was there for over 40 years in that condition. He kept coming, he kept coming, he kept coming. Disappointment faced him every year, but he kept coming. Amen. I want to say to somebody today, don't give up on your vision. Don't give up on your dream. You may get boxed down. You may get beaten up. But don't you give up because there is a God in heaven who is saying, prove me. And your adversity is a setback. is a challenge to your faith that can transition you to the next level of your relationship with God. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Prove me, say the Lord. Amen. See if I will not open the windows of heaven. You see, when God is going to move, you've got to act on God's term and not on your terms. And God told the prophet, through the prophet, he said to Naaman, Go dip seven times. And Naaman could not have the works of God and his terms. He had to have it on God's turn. Somebody say God's turn. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. God has 
is an amnesia to bring forth your deliverance and your transition. You have to do it on God's term. Say, God, I will not just do it my way. I'm not going to look for it my way. I'm going to look for it God's way. And that little girl prevailed upon me, man. He says, come on, master. If, it's, if the man of God had told you to do some great things, you would have done it. But he had, he's just telling you to do something simple. Why not prove God? Why not prove God? Hallelujah. He says, well, doesn't do me no harm. Let's go down to River Jordan. Somebody praise God. <laughs> And then he put his foot in the water, nothing happened. He did one time, nothing happened. He did two times, nothing happened. He did three times, nothing happened. Maybe he was looking for a progressive miracle. Maybe he was looking for things to get better gradually. But nothing was happening. And I can imagine that little girl by the riverside must have been saying, Come on, master, you're doing well three times dip again huh? and he did four times nothing happened huh? but the little girl by the riverside said master prove God prove God prove God he cannot fail prove God he is faithful prove God he is powerful prove God he takes pleasure in the miracles he takes pleasure in the impossible he takes pleasure in you out of a situation that I'm no exit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Through God. Amen. Praise God. And I want to challenge us this morning. This is a season of manifestation. And whatever is coming your way, why not step out and prove God? Prove Him with your situation. Prove Him with your needs. Proven with your sickness, proven with all that is happening in your household. Step out and say, God, I'm going to challenge you. Stand with me somewhere. I'm going to challenge you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have a situation this morning, I want you to look to God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Name and name six times and nothing happened. But when God says seven, he means seven. When God says not, he means not. When God says south, he means south. And to get God to work, you've got to work with God. I said to get God to work, you've got to work with God and listen to his voice and whatever he say to do you're gonna do it and leave the rest of God and name and went down seven times he came up with anticipation and expectation and as he lifted up his hands out of the water something began to happen something happened because God never fails. Amen. He never disappoints in a challenge. He will never disappoint faith. Your faith will be rewarded. Prove God. And see if he won't open the windows of heaven. If you are struggling with a decision this morning, I wonder if you want to prove God. There's something outstanding in your life that is creating a void in your purpose. I wonder if you want to prove God. If there is a next step that you believe God wants to do.
take you at this season. I, I wonder if you want to say, God, I'm gonna prove you. I'm gonna step out. Somebody praise God. The four lepers at the gate. They said if we sit here, we're gonna die. If we go in the city, we're gonna die. But we are gonna get up and we are gonna go towards the enemy camp. And we are gonna prove God. Maybe you've tried so many times and things just didn't work out. But I say keep one more time. Because God is not about to fail. He has never failed. He has a repetition to depend on. He has a track record to secure. He has a character to guide. He has never failed. And he will not fail. He did not fail Elijah on Mount Carmel. And he's not about to fail. At this late stage, I say to somebody, it is time to prove God and say, God, I'm ready for what you have for me for the next step. Prove God. Hallelujah. Prove God. It's never fail. You have a repetition to defend. I want to say today to somebody, I want you to lift your hands to God. But no matter what is going on in your body, if you're sick, you can prove the healing power of God. He's not just the God of yesterday, He's a God of now. And in the name of Jesus, it's a season of manifestation when the healing power of God is going to come up the people of God. For he said, I am the God that healed thee. Oh God, prove God. Did your sickness this morning, prove God. He said, I am the God that healed thee. And the healing power of God is still present in the church of the living God for every ailment. Even those that doctors can't manage, God can manage it in the name of Jesus. He can recreate. I said he can recreate our organs and make them new. He can move from our cells every ailment and malfunction in the name of Jesus. Yes, I know what God can do. What a beautiful name it is. I want to somebody I want to lift your hands and call on the name of Jesus. I'm ready to prove God. I'm ready to prove God. Your mountains might see is high, but prove God and see if your little faith your little fingers can move your big mountain to God, he says. Your little faith, amen, no mind, it just be small. But your little faith can move your big problems. Just prove God. Yes, brothers and sisters, he said, ask of me. And I will give you the heathen for an inheritance. He said, call upon me in the day of trouble. And I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. I wonder if somebody want to lift their hands in the presence of God. Whatever is causing your concern, whatever is wearing down your spirit right now in the name of Jesus. The Almighty God said it is a season of breakthrough. Whatever is in the heart's desire that's according to the will of God, that seems to be eluding you, he said, come on, there is a sacrifice. If you prove me by making that sacrifice, I'm going to open the windows of heaven. The Lord has ruled Ruling of, ruling of, there will be ruling of. Close it. Hallelujah. Woman, big Elijah, big. That barrier of meal 
just keep replenishing. I should take out and go back. It's right up back where it was. The cruise of all never seems. I should pour it out. When she went back, it's still again. <laughs> because she grew up. She said, I don't know how it's going to happen. But the man of God said, To make him a king first. I'm hungry and my son is dying. But I'm just going to do what God said. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to see this thing going to work. I don't understand it. And she made him a king. And she never was hungry again. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Lost 
tears. I'm just getting ready to replenish you. I'm just getting ready to pour you out with a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. I want somebody to lift their hands and call upon Jesus. It's a season of release. It's a season. God is empowering His church before His return. Preparing us for power. Amen. And the church started by fire. And He said, I'm going to restore the fire. I'm going to restore the power. I'm going to restore every gift. And I'm going to pour you out of this. So close today. Is anyone in the house to the big prayer to help you? In that step, the altar is open. I'll pray for you before we close. I want the church to worship God. God bless you, my sister. Yes, prove God. Prove God. Prove God. There are people that are willing to prove God. Yes, there are people that are willing Amen. to not listen to what man say, but listen to what God say. Prove me, say the Lord. I've seen him, I know, rebuke the devourers. It's a new season, a season of restoration and revival. A season when God said, I'm going to open the windows and rebuild the devourers for your sake. And the earth, the days are going to be greater than the father days. Because I, the Lord,